Detroit, the automotive capital of the world. Half a mile of asphalt, a quarter mile to race on and a quarter mile to slow down in. Thousands of people, but with one idea, one dream, to build a hot rod that is swifter than any other hot rod in its class. The test of one car against another to determine the lowest elapsed time. That's drag racing, and this is the king of all drag races, the Nationals. So, here we are, 500 horsepower ready to push me down that quarter of a mile in less than 10 seconds. You don't drive, you aim. You aim and try to keep it straight. It's like threading a needle at a quarter of a mile, but it's really living. So let's see how it all began. I guess everybody has his Shangri-La. For us, it's drag racing. I say us because it takes a team to build and race a top contender. The happy hours of a man's life are spent creating something. Some people paint, others write. Some design a rocket to the moon. But for us, it's trying to build a machine that'll cover a quarter of a mile quicker than anything else on four wheels. Lefty and Tom are high priests in our temple. Lefty works in electronics and Tom's a mechanic. And there's the High Lama, Jim Nelson. He's the engineer. In real life, he's manager of a speed shop in Oceanside. Tom and Jim are brothers. There I am with the jacket supervising the job. You gotta keep an eye on these boys or someday you'll mash down on the throttle and head right into outer space. Takes a lot of doing to make a record run. These cars are more highly bred than a racehorse. In fact, this is probably the most specialized type of machinery in the automotive world. When we head out for a big race like the Nationals, we take along enough spare parts to rebuild the engine as many times as we have to. Reliability is almost as important as speed. It takes a combination of both to win. In fact, I've known it to happen where the fastest car isn't necessarily the winner. There's at least one chow hound in every group. Nick was ours. Nick and Mike had farther to come than we did, so we set up a rendezvous. Safer to travel by caravan, it's more fun too. We hadn't been able to get together because of the hectic weeks of work that always precede a big meet. So there was lots to talk about. New ideas, things that worked and things that didn't work. The Dragliner was our last year's winner. Nick purchased it when we built the Dragmaster. Mike and Nick were running it this year. It's a long haul from California to Detroit, so Lefty broke up the powwow and we got underway. You hear a lot about the beauty of the Southwest, but unless you drive east, you never really get a good look at it.
found a great barbecue place in Amarillo. And of course, Nick was the first one in and the last one out. You wondered where he put it all until you looked down and saw those size 14 shoes. to see old friends again and we joined the Parkers in Oklahoma to catch a meet before pushing on. Give us a chance to work out the bugs and get the cars in top tune before arriving at the Nationals. Oklahoma had a regional meet. That's a Texas job burning up the track. My competition got off to a swirly start, which put me in the next round. There's Jamie Parker and his sea gasser. And there goes his brother Phil and his A gasser, affectionately called Grandma. And here comes Nick in the drag liner, a little on the late side. Lady Luck was riding on my shoulder all day. And there's the Allison against the twin Chevy. You can't see it for the smoke, but the Chevy won. And so did we. Jamie got first in his class, and we won a savings bond for top elimination. And could we use it? All work and no play could make drag racing a very dull sport. So after a hot day at the track, it's always pool time. By the time we left Oklahoma, we had quite a caravan. Two cars, a pickup, a rig, and five hot rods. to St. Louis and crossed the Mississippi, the weather began to look a little on the threatening side. storm broke. From there to Detroit, it was solid. Following day, the sun came out and everybody took a deep breath. Even so, we almost lost the whole day unpacking everything and getting it dried out. Then we had the car to clean up and get ready for technical inspection the next morning. All cars must pass a thorough technical inspection by representatives of the National Hot Rod Association. The association's rules have been responsible for setting and keeping the high standards of safety, so typical of modern hot rodding. 
classes are divided according to body types, engine size, and weight of car. This affords a wide variety of creations for hot rod enthusiasts to develop. The check charge system is used, and each contestant's car must pass all requirements before he is allowed on the drag strip. This often creates some lively discussions. Weighing in is always a critical moment. Rules call for a 30% front, 70% rear weight ratio. A few pounds light on the front end can disqualify a car, and a few pounds too few can throw it into a higher class. After technical inspection, the crew transports the car to the pit area, where a thorough tune-up is done before their first run. Barbara Livingston, a charming secretary of NHRA, is on hand to greet old friends and give newcomers a helping hand. Once satisfied, the crew wheels the car through the staging area and an amateur photographer gets her chance before the car gets to the starting line. Now it's time for the crew and the driver to test the car and the... The first days of the meet are strenuous and exhausting. The track is in continuous use by contestants, making test runs in time trials. All classes participate, and crews make run after run, trying to get their cars in perfect tune. For the spectator, it's an exciting time too, because they have the opportunity to observe the many different classes in action and compare their elapsed times. It is not at all unusual for the meet's best elapsed time to be set during the time trials. Parking lots and stands were filled to capacity as enthusiasts turned out in droves. Hot rodding has really come of age in the last decade. Since 1950, the sport has grown from only two active strips to the present colossal number of more than 250. This group from Washington represents the best in cooperation. Father drives and the whole family acts as crew. Whether it's an airplane engine or a V8, there's always work to be done. And a cool drink hits the spot on a hot day. For us, the big day was here. We were ready for the flat out run to see if we really had it or not. Check with Champion and make sure we have the right heat range. The Parkers were all at it too, making their last minute adjustments. A 
A word with one of the toughest competitors, Chuck Jones, of the Sidewinder crew from Long Beach, California. And then we were ready to take her down to the line. Inside California, it's the Martin Nelson machine, the Masters Track Master. They'll be running down for a record run. With top elapsed time on our Krondek clocks, a 9.12, 9.12 seconds. The Nelson Martin ma machine, the master's drag master. With the lowest ET of the meet so far and a possible record, they had to check the gas to make sure we weren't on rocket fuel. I felt mighty good on the trip back to the pits. You never want to count your chickens, or however the saying goes, because the day of eliminations, we heard those expensive noises when we fired her up. Nick was a big help. He ate as usual. There was nothing to do but tear her all down and see what the trouble was. to be a twisted cam lifter. So we dropped the pan, pulled out the cam, and got at it from the lower end. Fortunately, the cam was OK. The eliminations were starting, and time was working against us. The 1959 National Championship Drag Races the scene, the Detroit Dragway, Detroit, Michigan. We have competition coming from as far south as the Panama Canal Zone and as far north as the Canadian area from the east coast to the west coast. Two cars in the sea gas class. Jamie Parker on the tower side. It looked like everybody in Detroit was in the stands. Bill Parker in his A-gas coupe against Bill Waddell. Two four-bangers with Ray Huckabee of Houston, Texas on the spectator side taking an early lead. A Thunderbird and a Corvette in the sports car class. Two Chevy sedans vying for class honors. The original hot rods, two street roadsters. An Austin against a Fiat in the altered coupe class. The Cotton Pickens Special from Arizona taking the lead in the modified roadster class. In the competition coupe class, Nike and Veselka's last year's class winner blows up and loses to Robert Andrews of Ohio. Bernie Partridge in Miss Fortune from California gets a good start in the modified roadster class. With only minutes left, we got her buttoned up and down to the staging area. Jack Moss's twin Chevy taking a good lead over Arfon's Green Monster.
catch Ishimaru taking an early lead in his A Dragster. And the very beautiful Misfire the Third, a blown Chrysler Dragster from California on the spectator side. Two blown A Dragsters getting off to a good start. Two Texans, Jack Moss in his twin Chevy, being taken by Rod Singer on the tower side. Dode Martin in the Dragmaster, losing to Tets Ishimaru. Dragmaster with a lower ET, but Tets getting off the line better. Well, that's drag racing. Herman Moser in his ramrod getting off to a slow start. Two beautiful altars, the red coupe from Texas dusting off the bronze entry from Ohio. Charles Johnson from Michigan, trailing John Klein from Massachusetts in the modified roadster class. The very fast Hollish Brothers competition coupe with Jiggs Shamblin from Ohio taking a terrific lead. Rod Singer from Texas eliminates Bill Tibbles of Ohio and takes another step up the ladder. The crowd waits anxiously for the runoff of the little eliminator to get underway. And there goes George Montgomery of Dayton, Ohio. The winner with Hood Flying. Otis Smith of Ohio, a Roadster class winner, takes on Gabby Bleeker of Illinois, a altered winner, to win middle eliminator. Wally Parks, president of NHRA, talking to Mr. Ed Cole, general manager of Chevrolet, and Robert Peterson, publisher of Hot Rod magazine, with Mr. Tex Colbert, president of Chrysler Corporation. The grand prize, the DA Lubricants Chevrolet El Camino. Rod Singer on the way up to the line to run against Jig Shamblin for Mr. Top Eliminator. Rick gets a shot for Hot Rod as the crowd watches. And they're off. Up to the halfway mark, they're neck and neck. And coming into the traps is Rod Singer way out in front. Bad luck for Jig Shamblin, who dropped the clutch in the Hollish Brothers' beautiful competition coupe. On the starting line, the Green Monster, 1945 Allison Power Dragster with much, much go. And there's the flag. It's Bill Smith getting on the big green sign. He approaches the quarter mark of the strip, going wild up to the halfway. He's on it and into the three quarter. He's really coming on and in the traps with a top time, a top conduct time of 170.45 miles per hour. 170.45 miles per hour with the top time of the meet. And then the awards. The trophy for traveling the greatest distance to the Nationals, accepted by Mike Bamber. The award for the best appearing car and crew goes to Daryl Zimmerman of Colorado. And the trophy for the best engineered car to Mr. and Mrs. Lindley's Miss Fire the Third from California. Wally Parks presents the Eliminators Trophy in the sports car class to Jack Horsley, Jr. of Miami, Florida, who won in his Lincoln-powered Devon. George Montgomery of Dayton, Ohio, receiving his trophy for winning as the Little Eliminator. To the beautiful Otis Automotive Special of Akron, Ohio, goes the trophy for Middle Eliminator. Martin Nelson Dragmaster was considered, in the judge's opinion, the safest constructed car of the meet. They also won the trophy for the lowest ET. Wally Parks beckons to the crew of the Green Monster, 
to share honors with Art Arfons for establishing a new top speed record on gas of 170.45 miles per hour. And here comes the Singer Miller car being pushed back to the winner's circle. The car that won the meet. And Mr. Top Eliminator himself, Rod Singer of Houston, Texas. And to the winner, the beautiful champion spark plug trophy, the DA Lubricant El Camino, and the kiss. And so another Nationals draws to a close. Records have been set and broken. Ideas have been exchanged. Enthusiasts will return to garages and workshops to create new machines that will go a little faster and get from here to there in a little less time. For this is the story of ingenuity in action.